Well, welcome, Mad Dog and Merrill. Well, welcome to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Oh, yeah. It's a gorgeous day here. We are at the uh, Oneida Amelia Cornelius Cultural Park, and it's a great day. We have the 1890 homes behind us here. We got Fast Freddy from the 1890s. No, they're in the early 1900s. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and we're going to have a great show here today. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling coming your way in just a moment. I can't wait. <laughs> it's going to be good. It's going to be good, everybody. It's going to be really good. It's going to be good. <laughs> Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling is brought to you by Modern Home Products, the makers of MHP, Phoenix, and Profire Grills, Cherry Delight, Native American Tourism of Wisconsin, Awesome Shrimp and Seafood, Healthy Homegrown Wisconsin Potatoes, No Name Butcher Quality Meats, Sun Drop Soda, The Oneida Nation, Glorious Malone Fine Sausage, Henning's Award-Winning Cheese, Golden Home Ultra Thin Pizza Crusts, and by Lashbro Aerial Images. Welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. That's sort of a little happy tune old Freddy's just playing. Well, there, it's it? a happy sort of day. It is. It's a happy day, Freddy. Yes, it is. <laughs> they, uh, we are with our good friends at Oneida Nation here today. And Merrill had a chance later in the show. Yeah. Uh, Merrill had a chance to go to a beautiful new restaurant and bar. And it's called the Duck Creek Kitchen and Bar. It's at the Radisson Hotel and Casino uh, right by the airport in, in Green Bay. Right. right across the street. Uh, it, it's, it's the original casino. It's a great place. And a new retro uh, uh, restaurant type bar there. But now we're pleased to have Michelle with Oneida, who loves to talk about Oneida Nation. <laughs> I do. I do love to talk yeah. about Oneida. And, and you know what? What a beautiful cultural center here. And how, how important it is with the Oneidas to, to regain and, and to hold on to the culture that they have. For us, it's it's everything. It really is everything. It's about who we are, and it's the foundation of who we are. So it's important to keep it alive. It really is, and, and all the stories, all the creations, and everything else. We do three sisters a lot, uh, but you know, it, it's one of those where it, 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 it's it's synonymous when it comes to talking about the the Oneida Nation and other the all eleven tribes, if you will, of of Wisconsin. It is. It yeah. truly is. So, well, the history is really phenomenal. I mean, it's just amazing. As we were talking even just off the air of everything going on, but you know, my big thing is, uh, we've talked about this before, is the white corn. Can you explain the white corn a little bit to us? So the white corn is actually from our creation story. So it's from the beginning of time, and the Oneida people have kept it alive, kept it growing, and we're so fortunate that um, people have done that and brought it forward to today and it's even gaining resurgence today amongst uh, a lot of Oneida people growing it themselves. And I know when I, we, we've we gone to the Oneida powwow several times uh, when our daughter was younger, and there's a big strand of white corn as you enter into the powwow, and, it, and all the Oneidians as they enter in other nations of Wisconsin, of Wisconsin they always kind of like just touch the white corn just to give it a spirit within them. Um, yeah, I mean, I've noticed it anyway. I kinda, I, 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 displays and, you yeah. know, so it's uh, it is great if, yeah. if we can share cultural things for um, all different walks of life. That's what we're here for. Well, the, 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 I'll tell you what, Merrill had a chance to visit. And I'm kind of jealous. The, the Duck Creek Kitchen and Bar, and they have a, a great new menu, menu, and it's a great retro. And they're trying to use all the great products of the Oneida Nations. They do a good and job. they got a wonderful acorn squash gratin, acorn squash gratin with maple syrup that I'm going to incorporate into a recipe here today. We, they also have a three sisters with uh, scallions and peppers, and that's going to all go into one dish with any luck here today. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> now, 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 the acorn squash, when it comes to the restaurants, they can work with that if they want to, and that's fine with me. I got myself a big old Hubbard, and, that, and that's the difference between the two caps on top of there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, we have a bowl over here with a butter in and a masher, and I'm going to grab a couple of mats here, and I'm going to go right behind you for one second here. All right. And I got some gorgeous. I'm a, Holy cow, man. Yeah, old Mother Hubbard would have been promised to turn this way here away she from you. She could get that in her cupboard. <laughs> wow. uh, look at the size. Isn't that great? That is amazing. And, and you know, you can, you can wrap them up and cook in your oven. You can cook them on the grill. You can put them in a roaster. You can put them in a Nesco. It doesn't really make a difference. Uh, but what we're going to do, Michelle, is we're simply going to scoop out some of that gorgeous squash. And that's going to be the base to our little cast iron. Now, I would have, the assumption is in the 1890s when a lot of these homes were built, cast iron cooking was a mainstay. It was. Yeah. It was. I think for most people who were, they were basically all farmers. Right, so. right. How long do you cook this squash in the grill for? You know, I cooked it, I actually cooked it in a Nesco 
with some water in the bottom and it cooked up in an hour and a half time. But I had it on oh, a high heat and it just it turned out wonderful. The aroma. Can you smell it yeah. over there, Freddie boy? <laughs> well, wind's going the other way. <laughs> wind's going the other way. <laughs> Now what we're going to do, Michelle, we can change that around, <laughs> is I'm going to have you do a little mashing, if you would, please. I'm going to okay. take that away right there, and you can just do a little mashing with the butter inside of there. And we're going to add a, a little bit of uh, Wisconsin maple syrup with that. There you go. And just a little maple syrup, because it, it, actually the acorn squash gratin mm. with maple syrup exists there. So we're going to take our skillet away here. We're going to take this one away. This is going to go fast now, All folks. Right. Now we're going to go fast. Now good. we're You're moving. A good masher. We got Thank the master you. there. We have a corn pounder in front that we can talk about later. I know, that's later. interesting. Can you show them that corn pounder? That's right. Boy, back in the day, so they went ahead and just pounded the yep, corn. They would, mush. they would pound the corn until it was like flour Beautiful and mush job, and... dear. So we're going to take the squash and we're going to ladle that in our little cast iron. Ooh, we're going to that down. Yeah, we're going to make a little, uh, little casserole. Look at that. Here. So we're gonna put that down there. That's the squash with the maple syrup in. So the squash was part of the uh, the three sisters. The corn grew tall. Uh, right. The gr corn grew tall towards the sky. The uh, the beans wrapped themselves around the poles to, to give sturdiness to the corn yep. and gave nutrition to the ground. The squash leaves covered the earth to withhold the morning dew so it never went dry. It, uh, that is correct. And then the little animals didn't like that feeling on their paws either, so. so oh, but they didn't. Yeah. So now we're going to put a little uh, uh, pinto beans and red beans over the top of that nice little squash there. It'll look good. And then we have the white corn. Now the white corn, when you go to, uh, and you enter into Green Bay, you go to 500 Packerland Avenue. 500 Packerland Avenue. And uh, uh, there's a nice little night of one stop there. They got a great selection of bison. They got a great selection of the uh, black Angus and the grass fed beef. And they have other products from the cannery at Oneida. Uh, one of which is, is the dried corn. Uh, this is the white corn that's dried. And if you taste the difference between white corn and our regular field corn or sweet corn, this is like uh, tortilla chips. These oh, are just like is. corn the chips. Is these, phenomenal. Are, these are just absolutely phenomenal. And I boiled these down, so I cooked these down and simmered them for about 40 minutes or so on a nice low heat. So those are nice and tender. So we're going to add that to the top of that. And then one of the other recipes, of course, three sisters with the scallions and peppers. So over here, I took peppers and onions, and we're going to take a, a handful I'm or two of those. Over. And I'm just going to ladle those on top. Mm, mm, but that smell good. And Freddie, do you know what the gratin part is? <laughs> no, please tell me. <laughs> well, I'm, He's I'm really, I'm He's really waiting. praying it's cheese. <laughs> <laughs> so now we have the three sisters. We got the peppers, we have the onions. I'm gonna drizzle a little more maple syrup over the top of that. I mean, I have some yeah, it this. should be really good. We're gonna get this back on the grill, but before we do that, uh, we're gonna add some wonderful grated cheese over the top of that. And we're gonna let that all blend together. Now the grounds where we're standing at, Michelle, are normally uh, without the COVID-19 and the, and, the, and, the, and the unique sort of year we're having, Today would have been Apple Fest this weekend. It would have been Apple Fest, and we usually get about 8,000 people that come through, and kids, horses, apple pie contests, old time bingo, you name it. And uh, not happening this year, but we'll bring it Crafters back. Crafters and traditional yeah. foods. Oh, yes. And everything yeah. else. And Super brats and hamburgers. Brats and hamburgers. <laughs> I mean, it was, it, it, it's everything. And, and it's uh, sad that it's not here to this year, but. Right. It's all right. We'll we'll keep everybody yeah. safe and we'll bring it back next year. Now, how many different types of apples are, are growing here? Um, up at the apple orchard, there's uh, over 30 varieties of, of apples. Okay. So. And what was the one you were talking about earlier? That there, there's only three trees that grows. It's grows like a other. red Gaveston. Okay. Something like that. Anyways, um, the orchard I have picked up a, a bag and they only have three trees. And I was like, wow, three trees. So yeah. if you want to taste those, you have to go there now. <laughs> I'm glad I got a bag. Yeah, so. good for you. Good for you. All right. So we're gonna get that on the grill over there. And and it, so you can go to exploronida.com. By the way, we haven't mentioned too much yet. Exploronida.com. Exploronida.com. You can learn about the tours that normally happen. You can turn about, learn about Apple Fest next year, the powwow next year, uh, all the great events that happen here at Oneida Nation. And it's a, it's a wonderful community, it really is. And of course, they're great sponsors of the Green Bay Packers. We are. Being yep. the official Oneida Nation or 
official casino, whichever way you want to look at it, of the Green Bay Packers. So that's a wonderful thing. We're blessed to have that. That's a good support for, for localness, that's for sure. And tradition has it that the bison and buffalo steaks are, are phenomenal. Buffalo is just fantastic. Really good to, uh, to cook. Uh, there's hardly no fat, as you can see. They're really nice and lean. They are. You really do not want to overcook buffalo. So uh, definitely use a meat thermometer. I normally do my steaks around 130 degrees to 135. I like a nice medium rare. 130 is actually your fine, but don't forget when you take the steak off the grill, it's still going to increase in temperature there. So, so on these steaks... So, so by the way, you can go to 500 Packerland Avenue uh, in Green Bay, and they have a whole selection of bison, grass-fed beef, and the black Angus at a reasonable price. And I'll tell you what, when it's harvested, it's not like 7 or 8 or 12 bison at a time no. it's, it's a single it's a single harvest it's it, it, it's packaged and, and, and frozen the same day it's hand cut it's the best cuts in the world it really truly is and like you said they'll only harvest one um one at a time and yeah sell it out yeah it's good really nice and healthy for you now i'm going to create a rub today which actually from in the market i've got some tangerine ginger tea which is really nice a lot of people don't think about using teas all the time and then also I've got some fine Himalayan salt that I'm going to mix with that also. And then there again we're going to use a little bit of citrus twist of ours and a little bit of garlic pepper, which the garlic pepper is great, but this is a really good mixture. You can use as your own taste of what you're, uh, whatever you think on this, but the flavor, especially from the tea, is just phenomenal of how that really brings the flavor out for that. So we got that, a little bit of the salt there. And then, of course, what makes the Himalayan citrus. salt so special? Now? I knew you were going to ask me that. What does make that Himalayan salt so special? It's great. All right, going to stir this baby up. <laughs> it's the yodeling. It's the yodeling. <laughs> Himalaya. Hello. All right, here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Start your engines, Freddy. You ready? Are you ready, Freddy? I'm waiting. Freddy, are you ready? It smells good. Ready, go. Ready, are you ready? Ready. All right, here we go. Still can't get that thing started. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, you always wait till it's done. Always wait. Bad Dog preaches that all the time. On there. I'm going to rub that on there, too, so I'll be good. Good flavor. So he's going to put a nice little rub on there. I got one more thing to do before this segment ends, Michelle, right. so we got to keep moving here, and I apologize. Also at the market, uh, the white corn, and at the, at, the, uh, at the Duck Creek Kitchen and Bar at the Radisson Hotel and Casino, they have a, a wonderful heirloom white corn polenta. Oh, and we know yeah. it as mush. <laughs> but they have, but they have a great little, they have a great little name for it, polenta. And then you look up polenta recipes. Uh, here's the difference. This is the white corn. Uh, this is the beautiful white corn. You can see how beautiful, gorgeous, and white it is. This is the yellow that you normally see cornmeal. It doesn't hold a candle to the white. The white is absolutely gorgeous. The flavor is wonderful. This was a staple for every meal. And a lot of times they'll take this white corn, they'll take the or the cornmeal, they'll take they'll make a nice little mush or polenta, and they serve shrimp with it. Today, Merrill's going to do a nice little uh, 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 skirt steak. What do you call that? Skirt steak. <laughs> skirt steak. It ain't a skirt steak though, but it's something similar, very similar to a skirt steak. So all we're going to do is we've got uh, uh, eight cups of water, and I'm going to add two cups of the white corn. And we're going to give that a stir, and we're going to make some nice little polenta that you can get at that restaurant, the Duck Creek Kitchen and Bar, anytime you want. Michelle, thanks for spending some time with us here. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. We'll be right back. Yes, after we this. will, folks. Great recipes, folks. Welcome back to Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. Don't forget to exploreoneida.com, exploreoneida.com. The casinos are all open. They're doing as safely as possible. So if you need something to do, go to the beautiful Radisson or check out all the great little locations of casinos that Oneida do have. Go to exploreoneida.com if you would, please. And don't forget about all those great events next year, like Big Apple Fest. Yes, yeah, good And all you fest. simply do is take a nice little apple. The harvest was phenomenal this year. And we're simply going to do is we're going to core that baby out. He does that so well. He really does. Well, I had practice. You'll see. We did some beautiful apples. 
And I'll tell you what we did is we took uh, whole oats, cinnamon, brown sugar, and, and I took a little bit of uh, butter, and we kind of blended that all together, and we make our, made ourselves a little crisp. And we'll take that crisp and we put it inside our beautiful baked apples, soon to be baked apples. That goes on the grill, the indirect method of cooking, for about 30 to, for about 20 minutes or so. And the beautiful apples, those are hotter than Dickens. The apples come out just absolutely Good wonderful. Job. Those are delicious. They don't want to be overcooked. Serve them with a little great little uh, uh, white ice cream, vanilla ice cream. You'll be happy you did. And those come out nice. I made a little tin underneath to catch the juices once they start rolling. Okay. So I thought that was a good idea. He's a smart man. He knows what he's doing. He wants those juices to roll. Here is our uh, polenta. <laughs> <laughs> yes, polenta. Our, our mush. Oh, it looks like mush, mush, mush to me. Man. And I'll tell you what, normally a lot of people serve this, and it is great with shrimp. Well, it is. But when you got the bison handy, we're going to add a little bit of that beautiful stuff right in the center. All right. Meryl's going to decorate. Right, the bison. The, Look at this. Nice medium rare in the bison. Beautiful little maple syrup over the and top. Along with the bison, boy, the shrimp and polenta is just phenomenal. You wouldn't believe the taste of it. The same and thing with this. Here is our mixture that you can go to the brand new Duck Creek Kitchen and Bar, and you can get individually made all of these great acorn squash uh, gratin with maple syrup. You can get the Three Sisters with scallion peppers. You can get a Great Plains bison filet just like that. And this comes off just like, I want to use a wooden spoon. What do you Ooh. think, Freddie? You going to work? It's looking sure. wonderful. That's Ooh, the gratin yeah. right there and the squash and everything else. Ooh. I wish I had a better bowl, a plate to put that in. I really didn't want to put that on a plate. I'm going to put it right there. There's a guy. Yeah, because that's going to look just delicious. That's got the three sisters in there, the beautiful squash that our lovely mm. friend Michelle mashed up gorgeously with the butter she and was the a maple good syrup. She did a wonderful job. She should be with the unit. She should be. With the mash unit. She should. <laughs> yes, she should. Make Don't forget Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. And cook. Cook naturally, folks. You got it, folks. Hey, Freddie, you're going to eat your heart out, buddy. I'll tell you what, I'm in 7th Heaven. You know where I'm at? I'm at the Duck Creek Kitchen and Bar. And I got Chef Michael here with me today. How you doing, Chef? Good, thank you. Well, good. I mean, you put out quite a spread here. <laughs> I mean, quite. Well, a that's spread. how we're gonna do it. I know, you know this place is really unusual. I mean, it's all fresh. It's something totally different when you're gonna go out to eat. I mean, they've got some things here. I gotta start out with the first thing is uh, the chicken legs. So these are duck wings. Okay, yep. duck wings. Oh, yes. yeah. Duck, I love duck. I love it very much. So what? How are these made? So these are glazed with the maple and sriracha sauce. Very good. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> and the sauce is just the maple? Is it's, that what you have it's, in uh, There's maple, there's sriracha, some uh, lime juice, and some butter. Mm. Yeah. Are and then. Made uh, all fresh? Absolutely. Yeah, yes. That's great. And these are mm. actually fried in duck fat as yeah. well. So and why duck fat? Uh, you know, it adds a little bit of sweetness. It gives yeah, a little bit more flavor. Yeah, that's the flavor of it, too. Yeah, it's, it really different. adds a little bit of something extra, just kind of. Gets people's attention. Yeah, you know. I mean the duck too is something completely different than standard chicken wings or anything like that. Too. Good job, very good. Thank so you. what about let's go with other flatbread here? What do we have? Uh, so this here? is our Jasper Jasper vegetable pizza. So we have a Jasper oven uh, behind us there. Uh, we roast our vegetables in there. Okay. It's a uh, charcoal broiler. So every day we load it up with charcoal and wood. And um, it just it imparts a totally unique flavor. And then how, how hot does the, does the temperature get in there? It'll get over 600 degrees. Mm. Right. Yeah. So. Now also, um, you do pizzas here too. We do flatbread pizzas. Okay. Yes. Gotcha. So right. Do you make your own dough? And Absolutely. Everything's yeah. made in house. Yep. Oh, Freddie, yeah. you are just. I'm, yeah. <laughs> don't worry. I'm smiling, bud. I'm smiling. <laughs> this is great. Okay, the sandwich is what I'm really interested in over here. Okay, right. So this is um, this is coming right out of Skyworld, which is now open in the lobby okay. of the Radisson here. So we just opened that. Um, but I mean, I'm also really excited about this sandwich. So this is a tri-tip sandwich. Ah. So we get in uh, tri-tip and we will rub it with a barbecue rub, and then we smoke it in house, and then we serve it on a tulare roll with. Um, Caramelized onions, cheddar cheese, and tomatoes. And, uh, that's great. I mean, that's another thing that people are not familiar with is tri-tip. You know, it's just, it's got a very good flavor to it. Uh, definitely more of a Southwestern uh, 
flame to it. Absolutely. Comes out really good. And last but not least, what do we have here? So these are a couple of other pastries from Sky World as well. This is our signature muffin. It is our Badger State muffin. So it's made with fresh cranberries and fresh apples. And then uh, oat bran streusel on top. Mm. And this here, sir? This is our Kringle. <laughs> uh, yeah, Door County cherries, almonds. You got uh, it everything. all local, which is very good. Yeah, I'm glad to see that house. everything is local. Definitely. Folks, yeah. you got to come down here and try this. It is just absolutely fantastic. Freddie, sorry, buddy. You blew it. I got this place. We'll be right back with Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. ExploreOneida.com. Go to MadDogAndMerrill.com too uh, to find the link for our good friends at Oneida. Don't forget about Big Apple Fest, the powwows, the wonderful tours, the casinos, all the great things at Oneida Nation. Boy. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling. We had a great time today. Hey, Merrill. we did. You notice I haven't stuck anything in. Go right ahead. Oh, Go thank right you. ahead. I've been waiting. Freddie, you're doing wait. a great job. Fast Freddie on the keyboard, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, man. Mad Dog and Merrill's Midwest Grilling is a production of Lashbro Visual Communications.